All the work we've done in the last several videos has been leading us to this one theorem, which is actually two theorems, right? These are Kuratowski's theorem and Wagner's theorem. And I claim these are really perhaps the most important theorems about planar graphs because they give us a, a characterization of what it means to be planar in terms that are just in terms of the graph, right? So it, in some sense, takes the topology out of the planarity question and turns it into just a combinatorial question. This is especially true for Wagner's theorem, which says if there's no K5 or K33 minors, then the graph is not planar. Um, but we, we put it together here with its antecedent, the Kuratowski theorem from uh, seven years earlier. And so here they are. They look so similar. They, in fact, I guess they differ by one word if I write it this way. And I want to highlight one thing about them, which makes this especially important, of course, is that it's this if and only if. Like it's a complete characterization of the planar graphs. All right. So um, you might ask the following question. And I think actually uh, in the past students have asked me the following question. It's like, which is better? Like if I've got two theorems, one's about minors, one's about topological minors, is one just better than the other? And um, like one, one direction seems clear, I think. Seems that, you know, we know that if you're a topological minor, then you're a minor. Every topological minor, in other words, is a minor. And you could look at the contrapositive of this statement. So if K5 is not a minor of your graph, then uh, it's also not a topological minor. of your graph. So what this means is that actually neither of these theorems is strictly stronger than the other. In fact, uh, just knowing this, it, you see immediately that each of them implies one direction of the, uh, of the other. But the, both of those statements were if and only if statements. They, they gave a description of planar or non-planar graphs in, in both directions. So either you have this structure and you are not planar, you have one of these minors and therefore you're not planar, or you don't have one of these structures and therefore you are planar. And so um, just see quickly, like we see that if you have this certain topological minor, um, then if you knew Wagner's theorem and you knew you had one of these topological minors, you knew you had a minor and therefore you're not planar. On the other hand, if you knew you didn't have a particular minor, uh, to, and then you knew you didn't have it as a topological minor, and if you knew Kuratowski's theorem, then you know you're planar. So um, just, just this relationship between topological minors and minors is enough to, um, to show that each of the theorems implies just half of the other one. We're going to start with this lemma. And here's how it works. First, the statement. It's saying that if you have a K5 minor, then you have at least one of these two topological minors. You might not have a K5 topological minor, which we've done a bunch of times as examples with this Peterson graph, right? This one is a graph that has a K5 minor, but not a K5 topological minor, which we saw just immediately by thinking about the degrees. So uh, it's not enough to say we, that is, we can't just claim that it's going to have a K5 topological minor. But if it doesn't have a K5 topological minor, then it does have a K33 topological minor. And so we can check that one. I left it kind of as a half exercise last time. We're looking for a subgraph of this that topologically contracts to K33. And if you just try to find K33 as a topological minor in here, I find it kind of tricky to find it directly. But if you just do the following, if you just remove any one vertex, you'll find it's not too hard. So I'm just going to remove one vertex and we'll see what the resulting graph looks like. So by removing the vertex that was here, now I'm left with a couple degree two vertices, which if I'm thinking about topological minors and topological contractions, uh, I might as well replace those with just a single edge. 
And if I do that, I am left with, maybe I'll color these as I go, I'm left with exactly K33. So there we have it. So we see that this graph did not have a K5 topological minor, but it definitely has this K33 topological minor. So just to be clear here, I remove a vertex. And then this was just a topological contraction. I had a couple paths here that got replaced with single edges. And there we have it. So that's just an example to motivate how we should think about this lemma. Again, it's we had a K5 minor, and we want to find at least one of these two topological minors in the graph. So how do we do it? We're going to use this same idea that we saw in the last video of looking at the minimal pre-image of the contraction. So if it's a K5 minor, then there's some subgraph of G that contracts to K5. If you look at the subgraph and you take the minimal pre-image of that contraction, it's going to look something like this. Remember that the pre-image of every vertex will be a tree. So in here, each of these collections of vertices are going to map to one of the vertices in our K5. And between any one of these, there's exactly one edge in the minimal pre-image. So we get this kind of structure. And if it happens to be the case that if I look at every vertex, I look at the pre-image of every vertex, and I look at that that subgraph plus the edges coming out. I know there are four edges coming out, so it's going to look like a tree with four leaves. There's only two possibilities. That is up to homeomorphism. Trees with four leaves are either homeomorphically, they're S4, right? There's a single vertex like this with the four leaves, or it has two vertices with two leaves. So it's either one of these two graphs or a subdivision of one of these two graphs. If they're all in the first case, if all vertices are homeomorphic to this S4, that is each one has one degree four vertex and all the other vertices in the preimage of a vertex are degree two, then we just have some subdivision of S4 locally. And that means, in fact, what you had here is a K5 topological minor. In other words, K5 is a topological minor. Oops, this is supposed to be a T here. Topological minor of G. On the other hand, if, if they're not all like this, then at least one of them has to look like this. At least one of them has two vertices of degree three. And, um, and now we can stop worrying about what happened in any of the other ones. We're just going to take those two vertices. We're going to put one of them in one class. I've done it in yellow here. One in the other class, call it, I guess it's red. And of the other ones, if we were to contract these to a single vertex, each of these, which is what the contraction does, um, and even just throwing out these two edges, you'll notice that I colored the resulting vertices based on whether they were the two neighbors of the other color. So the two neighbors of the red one I colored yellow and the two neighbors of the yellow one I colored red. You can see directly here that I have a K33 minor. But if I have a K33 minor, we know that it's degree three. So that is also a topological minor. So in that case, I have a K33 topological minor. And so this is all we wanted, right? We had a graph that had a K5 minor, and we just want to see that it has either this K5 topological minor or it has a K33 topological minor. What does that do for us? Well, it implies now that we can look at these two conditions. Remember, these are the conditions for being non-planar in our two theorems. That is, if this is true, Kuratowski says that the graph is not planar. And if this one holds, then Wagner says 
it's not planar. And again, these both go in both directions. And now if and only if, you can think of this, of course, as by implication as well, it's saying that all three of these conditions are equivalent. So just this last theorem we proved, um, combined with the fact that if you have a K33, um, K33 minor, then you also have a K33 topological minor, that means that all these two theorems are going to be now equivalent. So it suffices for us to just prove one of them. All right, so I'll prove uh, Wagner's theorem. And let's just limit ourselves for now to three connected graphs. So if G is three connected, and it doesn't have a K5 or a K33 minor, then it is planar. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we're gonna do, go by induction on the number of vertices. And the base case, if n is equal to five, then this is really easy, because if, you're, if you only have five vertices, you clearly don't have a K33 minor. Um, and you, the only way to have a K5 minor would to actually be K5. And so we can check that every five vertex graph other than K5 has an embedding in the plane. Okay, so that's our, our base case for our induction. And now we know if n is bigger than five, there's some edge in the graph and we can contract that edge and the result will still be three connected. Now, by induction, this new graph, G mod UV, is going to be planar. Why? Well, contracting an edge cannot introduce one of these minors unless it was already present. So we know that the G mod UV also doesn't have these two minors and it's still three connected. And so by induction, it's planar. So let's look at an embedding. Here's G mod UV and we get some embedding of it. It's three connected. Uh, I've drawn G with an embedding here. Of course, we don't yet know whether or not we have such an embedding. We're trying to prove that such an embedding exists. But now I have this uh, vertex that I got from contracting the edge UV. And I know that since it's th three connected here, the removal of that vertex gives me a two connected graph, which is the same as just removing those two vertices from G. So I take this two connected graph, it's two connected and planar, and I know now that the faces that were incident to the vertex UV will all form a cycle, which will form a face in G minus UV. And my goal is to construct an embedding of G by building it up from this embedding of G minus UV. And since I know what face U and V have to land in, it's gonna suffice for me to reason about whether or not I can draw the neighbors, that is the edges from U to its neighbors and the edges from V to its neighbors without crossings. So let's zoom in on one cycle with two vertices. This is now the game we're playing. I have to put a vertex U and a vertex V inside a cycle they are adjacent. And I'd like it to be that the neighbors of U are all on one side and the neighbors of V are all on the other side. They could share some neighbors, but I claim not too many. In fact, they could only share two neighbors. If I can find some path through this cycle such that all the neighbors of U, let's call that big U, are on one side and then all the neighbors of uh, V, let's call that big V, are on the other side, then I can complete this embedding. All right, so first is to check that if the intersection of the neighbors, if U and V have at least three vertices in common, then this must be the picture because uh, I have the cycle, I've got U and V, and if these are the neighbors, one, two, three, you'll notice that this means that I have a K5 minor. In fact, I've just by drawing those required edges, the ones from U to its neighbors, V to its neighbors, and the cycle, I have K5, which is a contradiction, right? So that can't happen. So I know that they overlap or intersect at at most two vertices. And now as I go around, I can look at when I alternate. That is, I go from 
vertices in U to vertices in V only. And I'd like it to be the case that I alternate only two times going around. If I alternated more than twice, that means that I take U and V and I have some neighbor of U. Let's say I'm going around this way. Let's walk around. I see some neighbor of U and then I see a neighbor of V and then I see a neighbor of U and then a neighbor of V. Well, you may now recognize what we have here. We've just drawn uh, K33 topological minor. So not having a K5 or a K3 topological minor, K, sorry, not having a K3, K5 or K33, this doesn't even have to be a topological minor, it's just a K33 minor, not having one of these minors means that the neighbors have to be arranged exactly like this, in which case there's always a way to draw in the edges, uh, the neighbors of U and the neighbors of V, which allows us to complete an embedding Starting from the embedding of G minus UV, uh, we can get an embedding of G. And since we ha now have a planar embedding of G, that means that G is planar. All right, so we just did this for three connected graphs. And so now we can put it all together, right? So I wrote here our two theorems that we wanted to prove. Now we've shown their equivalent. I'm going to put it all together in one big chain of reasoning. So let's start over here. If I have either of these two minors, K33 or K5, then we now know that you have also a topological minor of one of the two. So I'll put the or here. And having either of these as a topological minor, we know that means the graph can't be planar. All right, so this is one direction, and you'll see in here it includes that direction for both of these theorems. Now going the other way, if we start with a graph G that's non-planar, now we're going to say, hey, there must be some minimal uh, non-planar graph in there. In particular, it has to be some minor minimal. So. I'm going to say G prime is a minor of G. Um, that is non-planar. And it's minor minimal in the sense that uh, there aren't any minors of G prime other than G prime itself that are non-planar. So it's the smallest minor I can get of G that is non-planar. And we've seen that that would mean that G prime is three connected, which is great because that's the one case of these theorems we've really proven now is that if we have a graph that's three connected and non-planar, then it must have one of these two minors. That's what we showed. So it has the K5 or it has the K33. And uh, well, if G prime is a minor of G, and G prime has these minors, then G also has the minors because being a minor is a transitive relation. So K5 is also a minor of G or K33, one of these two. See, I went from G prime over here to G over here. And as we've seen, having one of these two minors happens if and only if it has one of these two as topological minors. So that also gives me the other direction for Kuratowski's theorem. Okay, and so this last part was just putting together all the proofs we've done so far and including also this minimal part so that we can extend our proof for three connected graphs to all graphs. Right? Another way to think of this is that if I had a non-planar graph, then I have a minor minimal one. Right, so if I had a counterexample, so if it was a counterexample in the sense that it was non-planar, but it also didn't have one of these minors, or the counterexample to Kuratowski's theorem, it didn't have one of these minors, then if there is a counterexample like that, there should be a minimal one. And then we see that the minimal ones have to be three connected, and so indeed there is no counterexample. And this gives uh, proof of both of these classic theorems 
all in one go.